Hey, good morning, everybody. I am neither hustle nor slay. Jessica and uh, and Sid are both traveling, and I am honored as I have been watching them for a long time, learning from them and um, getting all their tips and tricks to help me in business. And very, very honored that they have asked me uh, to fill in this morning. My name is Joey Graves, and uh, I am a former pastor of a lot of years, pastored the same church for about 13 years, where we had the opportunity to grow that church uh, from about 100 members to about 600 in regular attendance. Um, that was a pretty amazing uh, time in my life. I've also been a business owner. I've owned a real estate appraisal company and a landscape company. Uh, we also did some bounce houses for a couple of years. So we have tried all kinds of wonderful things. And Jessica asked me uh, if I could kind of talk about some of the things in business in terms of follow through, because a lot of times that's where we fall short is in follow through. And I have a theory. I believe that follow through or follow up begins in the preparation before the uh, event ever happens. In fact, uh, in the event or the moment actually is the only thing you can't control. You can control how you follow up after your event. You can control how you get ready for your event. But the moment is, is really up to just all of these other variables that you can't control. Mike Tyson once said that everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Uh, the same is true for your event, whatever that is. If it's a business meeting or if it's a first-time contact, uh, if it's a podcast like this, when, you know, we, we don't know what's going to happen here in the moment, even though we're prepared. And so I think that follow through, getting ready, following up on all of the things you can do actually happens in the preparation. When I was pre preparing sermons um, every week, week after week, uh, one one professor taught us this. He said that uh, somebody is going to pay the price of your preparation. Either you're going to pay the price of being prepared or the people listening are going to pay the price and having to endure what you're talking about. So preparation and follow through is, is kind of really, I believe that, 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 that all of the follow through happens in the preparation. Um, so just a couple of areas you can apply this to. In my dentist office, every time I go to the dentist, they have me fill out a little card that says my name and my address. They, they tell me this is to verify, but what I realized after the first time that I went there that they were actually putting it on a sticker. And when I got my follow-up notice for my appointment for my next visit, it was actually in my handwriting. They took the sticker off of that verification process, put it right on the postcard to say, hey, this is your nose, this is your next appointment. And I thought, man, that's that's brilliant. They don't even have to fill out the, the information anymore. They actually had me do the follow-up for them. And we can do all kinds of things like that. We can prepare ahead of time for the follow-up. Now, how does this um maybe let's just talk about for a second, let's talk about planning for meetings. I read somewhere that you have to prepare for a meeting for at least as long as the meeting's gonna go. In fact, some people from Inc. Magazine say that you should actually prepare for a meeting twice as long as, the, as you expect the meeting to go. So if you have a half hour meeting, you should actually be preparing for a half hour to an hour for that meeting. Uh, I have this example of where I'm working currently that every morning we have the same meeting. Every morning we have the same report that we go over as a team. And I'm always amazed at how many people are surprised by what's on the report because I pull that report every morning about a half hour before the actual meeting happens. And I have questions. I, I already know what's going to be asked of me. So I try to get ready for that meeting and have the answers for anybody that's going to be asked. But more importantly, I have questions for that meeting and to say, hey, when this meeting's over with, what can I do? How can I fix whatever's going on in the meeting? Again, I can't I can't uh, control what's going on in the meeting, but I can, I can know what's going to happen. I can know what's going to be asked of me. I also know uh, what I can ask in that moment. So the preparation or the follow through uh, for all of the things that have to happen after that meeting can be done way ahead of time. I can say, hey, uh, ahead of time, these are the things that I'm concerned about. Can I get answers on these or who do I need to follow up with? That's a big deal for any meeting that you have, whether it's uh, you're presenting a, a, a business idea to somebody or whether you're just doing what I do, following up in group settings with, with the same reports and the same meetings over and over again. Um, you can plant seeds. 
ahead of time. You can say, you know, uh, this is the thing that I want to happen. This is the thing that I, I, I just want to drop this in there. This works really, really well for public speaking. Again, my background, every single week, I had at least two talks that I had to give. And so one of the things that I would do for the follow through for the follow up is that I would plant a seed, I would say, hey, these are some of the things that, that we, we've got coming up, I would just give an example of, of say I was talking about um, getting together with people and how important it is to get together with other people, how important it was uh, to really uh, get to know one another. And so during that talk, I would actually say, oh, by the way, next Friday, we've got this event coming up. You should really check it out. Here's the details of it. And if you need more information, go here. When I'm doing public speaking like I am here today and, I, and I, I'm a guest speaker, you can also plant seeds uh, the same way. You can say, hey, you know what? You can follow me at D. Joey, uh, D. Joey Graves on Facebook. That's where I'm at. Uh, and, and I know that the D throws a lot of people off because it's not how you normally spell Joey. And I can talk about those things. And you know what? It plants a seed that I'll have an opportunity to follow up with you later. Maybe you'll connect with me rather than me connecting with you. In fact, I remember a long time ago when we were trying to get some sales leads for some different areas in life, we were taught a little hack about, uh, about this following up thing. We'd say, here's my business card. That way you offer some legitimacy to who you are. Here's my business card. Here's what we're doing. And then as you get to talking, you say, you know what? We should really follow up on this. Can we get together Thursday at one? And if they say, yeah, then say, write your number down on, on this business card that I just gave you. And then they give you back your business card. You know what's amazing about that? <laughs> they no longer can call you to cancel. I know that seems so silly, but they can no longer call you to cancel. And they remembered you giving you giving them the business card. They remember that legitimacy of who you are. That's all planning ahead of time. That's all thinking about how, are, how am I going to follow up with this later on? Now, again, I was talking about... Um, you know, public speaking, I, I used to do a lot of it, a lot more of it than I'm doing now. And some of the it, some of the ways that I followed up after the public speaking was knowing what I wanted to happen afterwards. Now, in my realm, in the area that I did, I had really two goals. I wanted people to change and grow closer to God, because I believe that as you grow closer to God, that you're going to change some things are going to change in your life. It's often said that you can't meet God and stay the same. Something's going to change. And the other thing was I wanted them to get connected. So again, I would drop those notes about, hey, knowing that ahead of time, what can I do to help you? What can I do to push you forward? And I would have those steps in place before the talk. Now, during the talk, I might go off on a squirrel or a rabbit or, you know, chase down something or, or I might get distracted. It's it's amazing how many times at a storm we were in a big metal church, a big metal building, and how many times a storm would be coming through. And, and it was almost as though God had planned it, that I would be driving home a point and thunder would clap really loud. And I know that that sounds silly and it sounds like, you know, we planned it, but you can't plan for thunder. The first time it happened, it really threw me off. I was like, whoa, that was scary. Like, is the power going to go out? What's going to happen? Over time, I got to, to, to plan for that. You know, if this happens, let's, let's say, see how good God is? Look, he just put an exclamation point on this. So you can always plan for the things that are going to happen. You can always have some contingencies as you're preparing, whether it's public speaking or the meeting. But you also always want to drop that hint for later. You always want to drop that hint and say, hey, this is what we're going to do afterwards, or this is what I need to do afterwards. So the two areas that I always wanted to do in my public speaking at church was I wanted them to grow closer to God. I believe that comes with community. I really believe that comes with getting around other people that are like-minded. You probably have something similar in your business. You want to be around other people who are like-minded, other people who have vision, other people who want to see the future and, and run after it. So you can start in this public speaking saying, hey, you know what, we're getting together after, after church for, or we're getting together after this meeting for, for fellowship, just to hang out. You, you, why don't you join us? Now you can plan for that and say, maybe you have the meeting ready, or maybe you have the lunch space ready. Maybe you reserved a table for 10 or 15. We used to have a table, uh, the largest table available at the local bar. I know that sounds weird after church. But at the local bar, we used to plan every Sunday for 15 to 25 people to eat there. 
right after church. And we would invite people, hey, we're going to hang out at this at this pub for the next whatever. Now, it, it, it didn't usually get rowdy in there until after 5 p.m. unless there was a Lions football game on. So we weren't really distracted. But it was great because people would come to that environment where we might not always get them to go to, to the room next door and say, you know, hey, we're going to meet in this church room. And, and that's just awkward. Those are the kinds of things that, that take that follow through takes planning, setting up the reservation, letting people know, hey, this is what we're going to do. If you say, hey, we should get together sometime, guess what? You're never going to get together sometime. You have to set up a plan. You have to be ready for that. And so, again, all of this, I know I'm saying it over and over, follow through is always in the planning. You can plan to follow up well. <clears throat> um when hosting a project or, or a presentation, and this is more about business, this is more uh, when, you, when you're in a meeting and, and you're the person presenting it, you need to consider the questions that will be asked. And you need to ask the questions of how they need your assistance afterwards. In fact, you want to plant those seeds. Now, you can prepare for pushback. People are going to say, you know, well, what about this or what about that? I always tried to go into a meeting or a presentation with the answers to the frequently asked questions. In fact, I would often ask somebody else, hey, if I was to present this to you, what would your questions be? Again, part of the planning, part of the planning process, knowing that I'm going to have this question. Well, I don't have time or I don't have money or I don't, I don't need this product. You can have those uh, questions answered before you even start. And then you can actually use that as a lead to say, you know what, that's a great question. I'm not going to be able to cover that right now, but you know what, right after this, we're going to have some extra ideas. We're going to have some extra things going on right after this. I'm going to be available. Can, can we, can we talk then and plan for that extra time after the meeting? I know that a lot of speakers that I've had uh, the opportunity to work with really had tight schedules. And they would come in and they would give their sermon and then they'd go have to go off on an airplane or they'd have to run out and, and get lunch or they'd have another meeting right after. If you know that your goal is to answer questions and to make connections and to build relationships, plan that time in right after your presentation. Make sure that you are on time, that you finish on time, and that you have time afterwards to make a connection, even if it's just to say, you know what, I love to have, have this conversation with you. Can we get together? And you should know when you're available to get together. Maybe it's the bar right afterwards. Uh, maybe it's Tuesday at one o'clock, but you should have that information ahead of time. All of these things take preparation before the event. You can't possibly uh, guess everything that's going to happen, but you can anticipate what is needed for follow-up. One of the best things I did, <coughs> excuse me, in the church, and I didn't realize what I was doing until uh, I recently read a book by Chet Holmes. Chet Holmes says that you need to build relationships with your customers. You need to build relationships with your prospects if that's what you're doing. And one of the things that I used to do is carry around a little notepad in my pocket um, now I use my phone more often than not. And if somebody would offer a prayer request, I would write that down in that book. Now, you might think that that makes sense. You're going to write your prayer down. By the way, if you tell somebody you're going to pray for them, go ahead and take the time to pray for them. <laughs> in fact, I'd encourage you to do it right there in that moment. And I know I, I know that this isn't about, about church or about God, but that's just, it's an opportunity to take advantage of the moment. So I would write these things down. And I remember one time, um, little Johnny, I said, you know, hey, what, what, what is it that we can pray for you? And he was so nervous about his spelling test on Monday. He was so nervous about it. And so I wrote that down in my prayer, pray for little Johnny about, about the spelling test. But here's what you do next. The next time you see little Johnny, you make sure that you're pulling out that notepad and you say, hey, how did your test go? And if you can do that with all of your prospects, they mention, hey, I've got a golf tournament. Hey, how did your golf tournament go? If you can get their birthdays, make a reach out on their birthday, send them a card on their birthday. How are you going to follow up and build that relationship? Most people will, will give you all the info you need about them personally to give real connection. Now, 
I, I shared this in another forum one time before, and they said, you know what, that's just being fake. I don't think it's being fake. It's not being fake at all. Even if you put a system in place to do this automatically, even if you just add them to an email list for their birthdays, you've still taken more time than most of their family, than most of their friends. You have still taken the forethought, forethought to say, you're important to me. You were important enough that I made the effort, even if it was part of a plan and even if it was part of a system, you'd be amazed at just how often people are surprised by that and they go, wow, they actually remembered me. I love it when people give me prayer requests. I love it when people say, hey, you can help me with this because I get to write that down and I get to do the follow up. But again, without that pad and paper, I wasn't prepared for the moment that allows for follow up. See, all of this over and over again comes back to two things, preparation and follow through. If you need to make connections with people, and you do, by the way, if you're in business, you need to make connections with people. You need to plan ahead of time and then take advantage of everything you can in that moment. Now, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life. I've built relationships with, uh, in my real estate appraisal business, in fact, uh, we did this same thing with our real estate appraisal business long before uh, the recession of 2008. I would build relationships with my customers so much to the point through this system that we actually had a customer in Texas, a bank in Texas, actually fly in for my wedding because we had already built those relationships. We had asked, hey, how is your day going before we ever got to the business of whatever? And you know what? As a result of that, and as a result of following up and just sending off a note saying, you know what, these four appraisals are late, but these four appraisals are early. We built a relationship that still to this day, even though I've been out of the business for almost seven or eight years now, I still have contact with those people. And you know what? Every time I start a new venture, they ask me about the new venture. Hey, what's going on with this? Hey, is that something else I can get involved with? Now, a lot of us here are network marketers, so those connections are key. Those connections and building those relationships and following through on those relationships are what's going to build your business as you move forward. It is about relationship. They're going to buy you long before they buy the product. They're going to believe in you long before they believe in whatever it is that you're sharing with them. Now, I have a saying that I want to see people uh, reach their, their full potential. I believe that being your best you is the highest form of worship. Because when we were created, we were created with a purpose and with a lot of potential. How happy are you when your kids reach their potential? Same thing is true of God. And I believe all of that comes with planning to be successful. Planning to follow through and showing people that it's more than just business. If you follow through, you're showing you care not only about them, but also about your personal development, about your business, and about what it is that you're, take, you're doing and you're showing right now. Now, <laughs> I was prepared, uh, I thought, for a 45-minute talk, but I've done this so often and I've got so nervous because of the honor. Uh, I've actually gone through all of my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to ask if you have any questions. Um, if there's anything, I know that we're, we're in a recording right now. Is there anything you need clarification on? Because the idea here is really simple. Without any planning, you plan to fail. If you don't put forth the effort ahead of time, you're not going to have, you're not going to know what to do afterwards. And I promise you that the follow-up is far more important than what happens in the moment. In fact, the moment is, is, is just getting you ready to have the after conversation. How many times have you been in a meeting? I know this is true at church where the real meeting happened after the meeting. We would have a business meeting for the church and then the real influencers would go out in the parking lot and have their own meeting about what just happened. Same is true in business. Now that I'm in a, a corporate environment and I'm sitting in a cubicle for the first time in my life, I've noticed the same thing. There's the meeting and then there's the influencers having a meeting afterwards. And you need to make sure that you're planning for those things. So 20 minutes is where we're at. And uh, I just want to say once again, plan to follow through. 
Some of these tips and tricks are really simple, but make sure that you're planning to follow through. Follow through is a whole lot easier if you know what you're going to do before you actually talk to the client. Listen, guys, uh, that's it for today. I want to again say thank you to Hustle and Slay. I want to thank you uh, to Jessica for trusting me with this. I want to say thank you to Kristen uh, for for the behind the scenes stuff. She's kind of following through on on uh, all of the Zoom stuff and the music. Great job DJing. I appreciate you so much. Don't forget if you're not already signed up for the Hustle and Slay. Um, app that you download the app because the brand new 21 day, 21 day challenge starts on February 1st, just a couple of days away. And I can't wait to hear uh, the guest speaker on, on Wednesday. So check back in here Wednesday at 9 a.m. Guys, make it a great day. In fact, plan to make it a great day. I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Joey. That was great.